Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? Good, good, good. Awesome. How many of us enjoyed last week's message from Jeremy Joyce? Very, it was good, challenged us a lot. Well, we're going to continue the series this morning with Brother Tim Hutchins on sharpening the sword. So give him a warm welcome this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, the title of this segment is His Word in Your Heart. And David himself said, um, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And the goal, the ultimate goal of this series is to equip ourselves to become conversational in our knowledge of God's word. And um, for any of us that have been involved in, in Bible quizzing for any length of time, there's a certain advantage to intense memorization of scripture. And while we're going to touch on that, um, ultimately, the goal, again, is just really to become familiar enough with what's in God's Word that you can draw from it at any moment in time, in any conversation, in any situation, and to know that there's something in God's Word that will apply to that situation. Uh, Jimmy and Milton, I mean Fred and Barney, whoever they were aliasing as, were uh, recently featured in a video to show how easy it should be just to share a scripture with someone in the moment. I think you guys saw that a couple of Sundays ago. Um, the word of God should always be shared in a loving and kind way. It's a sword. It's not a club. And um, one of the conversations that I get all the time, and I'm sure you guys have encountered this, well, I don't go to church anywhere, but I'm a, I'm a really good person. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Bring your really good self to church and do something with it, you know? And so I typically respond with, you know, that's, that's really great. It's great to be a good person, but would you like to know what the Bible says about that? Jesus himself said, there's none good but God. Isaiah teaches that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you really can't be good enough to be saved. So being a, a good person is great. That's, that's something to work with. But unfortunately, a little bit more is required of us. So what did Peter say when he was asked, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the significance of the name of Jesus Christ? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man sent here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Awesome. So neither is there salvation in any other. High five. So to become conversational in our knowledge of Scripture, we have got to develop a biblical worldview. And you guys have heard Pastor, if you've been around here for any length of time, talk about having a biblical worldview. Now, we typically don't explore what that means. I think everybody just kind of latches on to that and understands that means that I must have some level of understanding of the Scripture and what's in the Bible. But would anybody like to share what their understanding of having a biblical worldview is? Looking at the world through God's lens, right? That's essentially what it means, and, and that's one of the rhetorical questions I was going to ask this morning. Through what lens do you view the world? What is your, what is your context for life? When you look for answers to life's problems, where do you go to look for those answers? Hopefully it's not the Orlando Sentinel or Newsweek or People Magazine, right? The Word of God is the authoritative and final roadmap and instruction manual for life. And we have to not only recognize it as such, but apply it as such. So spending time in the Word, and there's a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you guys that supports this concept. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And I'm going to share with you guys a, a real quick tip, a, a Bible quizzing tip, 
that we use to try to make associations with scripture. So when you're trying to, to retain any amount of information um, when it comes to memorization of scripture, and again, we're not gonna focus on the intense level that is done um, like that, but one of the associations that I make, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for Dr. Circle, D-R-C-I-R. And that's the way that I can remember doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So just one of those quick tips, that was not in my notes, but I figured I'd throw it out there for free. It's not gonna cost anybody anything extra. Um, try to find something in the verse that will help you associate the information that's in the verse with either the verse reference or just the overall concept of that verse. And that's a, a quick tip to, to help you retain the information. Another scripture is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And one of the things that I like to do personally is cross-reference. You know, it's great to start with King James Version, all the these and the thous and the yees and the, um, all of the old English that was um, used to translate to the King James Version. It is great. There's nothing more pure than that. But to look at other versions of the Bible is very, very helpful when you're cross-referencing and studying. It kind of brings a little bit more color, um, common English to it. The Amplified version of the Bible says, Study and do your best to present yourself to God, approved a workman who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching, which suggests that you can inaccurately handle the Word of God. How many of you have had a conversation with somebody and they totally took verses to support their belief out of context and you knew, you knew that they were taking a verse, yes, that's in there at face value, it says such and such. You know, Matthew 28, 19 is one of those perfect ones for those that have not received a full revelation of the name of Jesus Christ and they still baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? That's great. Well, that's exactly what Matthew 28, 19 says. But let's dig a little bit deeper. What is the name of the Father? Those are titles. What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Holy Spirit? So you can get tangled in a situation frequently with someone who will take a single scripture, and yes, that's in the Bible, and take it out of context, and you've got to be able to defend your belief and help them connect some of the dots that maybe haven't been connected heretofore. So accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth as opposed to inaccurately handling or taking verses out of context. And the only way that you can establish correct context is by studying. We're going to talk a little bit about memorization. And one of the methods, it's a very uh, proven method that we use in Bible quizzing, is called the phrase 15 method. And you essentially take a verse, um, any verse of your choosing, and break it down into phrases. Pretty much everybody in the room knows Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So you would say Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. I could have had Veronica teach a session on this. She's done this many, many times. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. So you say it 15 times, and basically there's no substitute for repetition. Um, no shortcuts. I'm going to provide you with a couple of aids that will help the process along a little bit. But at the end of the day, there's no substitute for repetition. So you get that phrase down 15 times, and then you add the next phrase. In the beginning, God created, and you can take it as far as you want to go. God created the heaven and the earth. Some shorter verses you can break up into two or three phases, uh, phrases. Longer verses sometimes will take four or five phrases to memorize the entire scripture. But one of the important things is you want to incorporate all of your senses. Now, most of you, I think, would agree that if you're just sitting there and you're saying it in your head and there's not anything auditory going on, it's very easy for your mind to wonder. So, you know, we use the same example when we say, well, we close our eyes oftentimes in church when we're praying so we're not distracted by everything that's going on us, around us and it kind of helps our focus, right? So when you're making any effort to learn scripture, it helps to read it, say it out loud, so that you are saying it, seeing it, and hearing it all at the same time. It just kind of helps cement the information in your mind. 
One of the other opportunities that we have, we actually use it in Bible quizzing, um, are audio CDs. And um, how many songs do you guys know the lyrics to? Lots of songs, right? There's something very, very powerful about mixing music and melody with words. It increases our ability to retain it. Well, fortunately, our organization has um, latched onto that. And Sister Danae Varnum Richardson from Bellevue um, for years has done the Bible verses that are used in Bible quizzing and put it to song. Um, and we listen to the music CDs every single day. Bella has actually been guilty, I say guilty, of singing the verses during a competition to answer a quotation question because it's so easy and natural for her to do that. Um, but words to melody, words to music, um, definitely has power. And all I'll say is if you're interested in getting um, music CDs for the scriptures that support doctrine, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the upcoming slides, um, we can make those available to you. Just let us know if you're interested and we'll try to make that connection for you. Listen and enjoy. <laughs> All right, we'll move on before anybody jumps off the cliff. <laughs> but you, you get the idea, and um, Danae has been so, so creative, and every song doesn't sound the same. She uses a different tune, a different style of music with each and every verse. Um, obviously, when you're covering hundreds of verses over the course of a single season, there's a little bit of repetition there. Um, so you're going to get um, a little bit of the same sound, but it's very, very creative. And, and I'm sorry, that looks very, very tiny. So I'll try to help you guys out. This is the outline, the verse outline or the subject outline that was used the last year that we covered Doctrine, which was 2012. And it covers subjects. The, the first subject is the Bible, the infallible word of God. And there are a um, list of sub topics there. God himself is the author of the Bible. It is the Word of God. Um, I won't read them all to you. We're going to make this outline available to everyone through our Facebook page. And then the next segment that I'm going to cover is actually some of the verses, just a sample of the verses that are associated with these subjects. The second subject is one God, the mighty God in Christ. Third subject is sin and salvation. Fourth subject is Christian living. So basically, this is kind of a soup to nuts approach. What we're trying to do is equip this class with focused material. Instead of you just leaving the class and saying, okay, where do I start? What do I begin with? There's really no need to try to memorize Genesis to Revelation. I don't think anybody would ever be able to do that. So we're trying to take those select verses that support our core beliefs in terms of doctrine, in terms of sin and salvation, um, conversation we had earlier, men and brethren, what do I do? It's not enough just to be a good person. And Christian living, um, once you have experienced salvation, um, maintaining that relationship with God effectively and successfully throughout the rest of your life. So those are the, the four key subjects. Again, this outline is going to be provided on our Facebook page. And what I added into the mix were some sample scriptures. So these are just the first two subjects, the Bible, the infallible Word of God. God himself is the author of the Bible. It is the Word of God. And there are a list of maybe, you know, nine or ten scriptures there that support the fact. So these are just, you know, plucked out of the entire Bible. You can see the bottom scripture, if you're able to, is from Hebrews. The first uh, scripture that supports that topic is from Exodus. So it's all over the Old Testament and the New Testament. And these are the scriptures that I have always referred to as the all-star verses in the Bible because they're pulled out selectively to defend or support um, our beliefs concerning any given subject as it relates to doctrine. 
and you don't have to go looking for them. They're all there. And so I would highly recommend that we use the scriptures that are going to be provided in the outline. So the outline is going to be there, and then all of the scriptures by topic are going to be posted on the Facebook page as well and will be made available to everyone. And then the audio CDs were done for the same material that year back in 2012. So we've got to do a little digging to find our copies of them. The church actually buys a copy of those audio CDs for all of our Bible quizzers. So we can get our hands on and make copies if anyone is available or interested rather in, in um, taking that on. And it's a great aid, not only for your kids. Again, it's, it's a means to an end. It's obviously aimed at children and teenagers, but um, I'm, I'm finding that adults, my wife and I are singing some of the verses along with our kids. So it works on us too. You're never too old to, to learn a, a new trick. So um, a couple of the apps that I wanted to share with you guys, and, and I'm sure that you guys are, are familiar with Uversion. Who has Uversion on their phone? Okay, maybe everybody doesn't want to raise their hands. We've got one in the room. Thank you, Anne. So thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, didn't mean to put anybody on the spot. That's a very, very, very popular app. It's a Bible app. It has over 50 versions, um, 50 English versions of the Bible. So when I talked about looking at the Amplified Version or the Message Translation or the New Living Translation, um, there are over 50 English versions of the Bible on that Uversion app. And you can keep it on your phone, your iPad, whatever device you have. It's there with you all the time. It has a search bar so you can look up keywords and it is a very very easy and effective way to keep your bible literally in the palm of your hand and look scriptures up so you may know hey i know it's in there somewhere and i can think of a key word and literally in the matter of 30 seconds you're able to find that scripture pull it up and share it with somebody so that's a very very useful tool i would recommend highly recommend that everybody look into getting that U version app on your phone um, they have a verse of the day. This is just a screenshot from basically the home page of the Uversion app. The next one is um, versions of the Bible that they have. Common English, the Message Translation, Amplified, New Living Translation, King James Version. Those are the ones that I had recently used. Um, and you can see others as well. The American Standard Version. Uh, books of the Bible. Again, there are a total of 50 English translations of the Bible. So plenty to choose from. The next is a screenshot of just um, a set of verses. This is actually out of 2 Timothy 2.15, which is one of the verses that we talked about, study to show thyself approved unto God. And then the second app that I really like to use, and this is um, taking a little bit of a deeper dive into scripture study, and again, all of these things are tools just to kind of help you build your arsenal. This is the Strong's Concordance. How many of you are familiar with Strong's Concordance? So in the old days, you used to sit there with your Bible opened up, and then you had this great big blue Strong's Concordance that weighed probably 35 pounds, and you would open it up side by side with your Bible, and you would have to take your Bible and say, okay, I would like to know a little bit more about that word approved. What does it mean to be approved? Um, or what is it saying about um, good? This is a scripture, Matthew 19, 14, that I said earlier, there is none good but God. These are the words of Jesus. So when you want to do a, a little bit of a deeper dive, and again, it really adds a lot of um, color commentary to the, the face value of the scripture, because we look at scripture and we automatically apply our understanding of that word at face value. It's, it's the word that we've used. Most of the words are, are very, very common to us. And we automatically gravitate to our modern day English understanding of that word. Well, all of the Old Testament was translated from original Hebrew. And so the Hebrew words that all of our words came from really have a lot more life in the definition of those words than our common English words have at face value. So there is much to be gleaned from looking in Strong's Concordance. And if you look at the New Testament, it's, it's the Greek. It's one of those association things. New, is, New Testament is not Hebrew, so it would be nice if they rhymed, but you have to remember that new is not Hebrew. New is Greek. 
Old Testament is Hebrew. And um, one of the things that, that is very, very easy with the Strong's Concordance app is when you pull up a verse, and you can look by book, chapter, and verse, any verse that you want, all of the words that are underlined in red, and you can see how many of them there are, all of the words that are underlined in red, if you tap on that word, will bring up the original Greek or Hebrew. It will tell you what the pronunciation of that word is. So agathos is the original Greek for good when they were talking about God. And if you scroll up, obviously I didn't have the ability to do that in this demonstration, but of good constitution or, or nature, and there's about six different definitions for the original word good. And you're able to, again, do a little bit of a deeper dive into exactly what that word means and from its original translation. So that is a very, very good study tool. Um, again, it brings a lot of color, a lot of life to the scriptures as you study them. And I want to ask with the couple of minutes that you listen to Deuteronomy 6.4, how many of you think you can quote it? It's only like... <laughs> It works. Well, actually, it wasn't, but she played into it nicely. All right, nobody wants to venture out and give it a shot? Go ahead. Okay. Can you sing it? <laughs> In key, on tune. <laughs> but again, we're just trying to kind of pack some tools, uh, develop a little bit of a toolbox for you guys. Um, highlight some things that um, will definitely be useful. And uh, again, at the end of the day, the, the objective is to become conversational, become comfortable, conversational, know enough about what's in the Word of God that you can at least have an, enough presence of mind. You know, when you're having a conversation with somebody and they're complaining about a situation and, and you empathize with them and, and share with them the same worldview that they have, Already, oh, that's so bad. Yeah, I've got this guy at work that I, you know, he was telling me he's going through the same situation. Well, when you relate to somebody on their level from a worldly point of view, you're not helping them <laughs> at all. But there is instant credibility, instant credibility when you say, you know what, I'd like to share with you what the Bible has to say about that. I mean, you would be amazed. If you haven't tried it, you need to. You will be amazed at how, how, Quickly, the tone of the conversation changes, and they are eager to hear. Most of the people that we encounter in our world want to believe that they are trying to live a Christian life, okay? If, if you ask them if they believe in God, oh yeah, they're all about it. But I said all of that to say that you'll be amazed how quickly the tone of the conversation will change, and instant credibility comes to you in the conversation when you have the boldness and the knowledge to say, would you like to know what the Bible says about that? So that's what we wanna challenge each and every one of us in this class to do is develop a working knowledge and a conversational knowledge of God's Word.